Good morning and happy Easter. As always, it's good to have you here with us today. Today we'll be celebrating the third Sunday of Easter and Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Kenneth White. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord of mercy, may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life, amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. 
For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth, as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My, dot, my body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed up by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, 
two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. We were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Way back when, I was stationed in Meadville, Pennsylvania, St. Agatha's Church. And probably 14, 15 years ago, I had a wedding, lots of weddings, but I had one wedding in particular. And it went well, and afterwards, you know, a week or two later, the the bride came up to me and said, you know, I just want to thank you for our wedding. And I said, well, hey, you're welcome. And she said, you know, you were so nice and so helpful and so welcoming. And, and it really was a wonderful experience. And I said, well, thanks. That's, that, that makes me happy. And she said, um, yeah, the last experience I had at that church or at this church wasn't so good. And I said, oh, and she said, yeah, you know, my daughter was baptized way back when. And um, the priest there, well, oof, well, he was kind of a jerk. And I said, oh, really? And I said, who was it? I was taken aback. And she really had a, a bad experience. Yeah, she, anyway, she said, I don't remember his name. And, uh, but anyway, this was so much nicer. And thank you very much. And so I said, you're welcome. And I'm sorry about what happened in the old days. So anyway, I went back into the office, of course, to look and see who the priest was who made such a terrible impression. And so I leafed through the book and I found her daughter's baptismal record from eight or nine or ten years prior. And I looked at the end and it said, Reverend Richard J. Allen. And I went, oh boy, because <laughs> that was me. Uh, yeah, I had been there as a young priest for two years and then I... Uh, I was assigned to another church for four or five years, and, and then I came back to St. Agatha's as the pastor. But apparently, I had baptized her daughter, and I must not have been in a very helpful or welcoming or kind mood. It made a bad impression. Luckily, she forgot who I was. 
But um, the thing was, you know, I remember thinking about that at the time that I had heard about it later. And I was more upset about the negative impression I had made and apparently the bad experience that came along with it than I was happy with the good experience of the wedding. You know, you, there were two stories there, one bad, one good, and I found that in my heart I was concentrating more on the sad and uncomfortable story than on the really wonderful story. And that made me think a little bit. Uh, it, 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 we have a propensity or uh, for doing that sort of thing. It is easy to rem easier to remember the bad things or the sad things or the uncomfortable moments that we've been through than sometimes it is to remember all the good times and the wonderful things people said to us. Uh, I think it might be part of our fallen state. I think there might be some sort of natural pessimism among human beings or maybe the painful experiences make a deeper impression. I'm not sure exactly what it was or what it is, but we have that. And in our gospel today, we can see it. You know, if you think about those two disciples who were walking along, looking downcast, uh, when Jesus came and started to question them, really they had two different sets of facts that they were thinking about. One, there, there was Jesus who was a prophet, mighty in word and deed, who was put to death by the, our chief priests and the rulers. And that was horrible. But then there was the other part of the story, which was some women from our group found the tomb empty and they reported that they saw him. Uh, but when they were thinking about those two sets of facts, what they were what, they, what it left them with was sadness. They were, they were downcast. The horrible, or the horror of the crucifixion was more meaningful to them than the possibility of resurrection. And I find that to be interesting. And so what Jesus did was he pointed out how even in the crucifixion, well, the Lord had to be treated this way. The Messiah needed to be treated this way for God's plan to be made manifest. And he would let them know that, you know what, he had truly risen. And I think there's something good for us to ponder in all that. Because even though we have the propensity for looking at the dark side, looking at the sadness, concentrating on those more difficult moments, as Christians, it's supposed to be different. As Christians, we are supposed to take even a story like the resurrection, which must have seemed fantastically unreasonable to those two disciples. And we're supposed to say, well, you know what? If God's involved, it's possible. If God's involved, anything can happen. If uh, Jesus was truly the servant of the Lord, then yeah, it could have happened. And they should have believed that. And now we believe it because we've heard the story so many times. But as we go through life, we need to make sure that we are people who do have a basic optimism, who do try to look at the bright side. And it's not that everything's always perfect, but we, are, we know that there's hope and we know that in the end, goodness wins. Because if I go back to that story about the, the bride who I had her baptism or her daughter's baptism, then I had her wedding, yeah, apparently that baptism was an unpleasant experience for her. However, the wedding was a very happy experience, and the way we interacted around the wedding was healthy and happy and wonderful. And that, ultimately, is what made the deeper impression. She and her new husband were in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday for the rest of my time at that church. Um, something had gone right. And so I can sit there and look back and say, oof, I wish I hadn't been the way I was back in 1998 or 1999, but I should also make sure I give thanks that in the intervening eight or nine or 10 years, that something had changed and something in my demeanor or maybe just the way I was feeling that day, but something had gotten better and a good experience, a happier experience and a healthier experience happened. And that's what I need to make sure I concentrate on. Now, does that mean we ignore the bad things in our past? No. I should look back at that day all those years ago where, well, I must have made a bad impression 
and try to learn from that. Well, we should learn from the tough times, the, the difficult moments, the sad days, or the days in which we fail to measure up. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we glory in the good days and we learn from them as well and we see how things could be. These disciples didn't understand that yet, but once Jesus opened their eyes to his presence, well, there was great joy, there was a great sense of wonder, and there was this sense of purpose as they ran back to Jerusalem and shared the good news. And there they found even more good news. He had appeared to the apostles. So anyway, the Easter message is supposed to be one of hope. And it's not just the Easter message, it's the Christian life in general. We're supposed to be people who yeah, experience the bad days, but the good days make an even greater impression. And in the end, they're the days that are of the most importance because we're being blessed by God, doing his good work, and living with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. that the church may continue to be the standard bearer for love and compassion for all people in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of state may be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer or grieve may find meaning through God's mercy and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all received into the church this Easter may continue to be led by the Lord on the path of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Ken White, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, that they may rejoice forever with Jesus in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of mercy, we trust in your love and seek your strength in all we do. We bring these prayers before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ken White, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please pray with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure to have you here with us at Notre Dame. Um, I guess there are no announcements today, so that's always good news. Uh, I hope you'll keep the parish, keep me, keep all our parishioners, and keep each other in your prayers. Um, it's hard to be, or easy to become disconnected when we are just meeting each other on a video screen. But we need to remember that we are still the body of Christ, that we have this bond and this connection. And we, even if we can't speak to each other in person, we need to make sure that we're at least doing our best to pray for one another. So anyway, I hope you have a good day and I hope you have a good week. to God in all holy places, praise to the sea and sky.